Welcome to Code Corner with Katie. What's on thinking man's mind today? What is controlled egress and where can I use it? That's another great question. Thank you so much. I get this one a lot. Come on in and let's take a look. I'll be basing my answer using references from IBC 2015. Other editions are similar. Always consult your state and local codes as well. There are some jurisdictions that will not allow mag locks, even though they are permitted in the IBC. So always double check. Here is a video of a picture perfect example of what controlled egress is. I had to use a valid credential in order to unlock the mag lock from the egress side. Notice that there are no motion sensors. There's no emergency push button. There isn't anything on the wall except the card reader. That is the only way to gain access. In chapter 10, 1010.1.9.6 says that controlled egress, electric locking systems, including electromechanical locking systems and electromagnetic locking systems, shall be permitted to be locked in the means of egress in groups I1 and I2 only, just those two occupancy types. Group I1, is typically institutional assisted living, and I2 is institutional in terms of nursing homes and hospitals. But there's one more key, where the clinical needs of the persons receiving care require their containment. So these can't be used in a hospital or a nursing home or in an assisted living facility where it's just for the containment of the public, only where it's for the persons who are receiving for the clinical needs of the patients that require their containment. Let's take a look at what other, what other requirements there are. First, the door locks shall unlock on the actuation of the automatic sprinkler system or automatic fire detection system. Second, the door lock shall unlock on loss of power controlling the lock or the lock mechanism. This means that they're fail safe. Third, the door locking systems have to be installed and capable of being unlocked by a switch that's located either at the fire command center, a nursing station, or other approved location. The switch shall directly break power to the lock. Fourth, a building occupant shall not be required to pass through more than one door that's equipped with a controlled egress locking system before entering an exit. And please note that these four do not apply to the exceptions for behavioral health areas or infant protection systems. You do not need to meet any of these four. But in addition to these four, if you don't have behavioral health or infant protection system, or if you do have those, these also apply. And that is number five, the procedures for unlocking the doors must be part of an emergency planning and preparedness plan that's required as part of chapter four of the International Fire Code, and that must be approved. Six, all clinical staff shall have keys, codes, or other means necessary to operate the locking system. Seven, emergency lighting provided at the door. And eight, the door locking system shall be installed in accordance with UL 294. The most common applications in a hospital would be behavioral health areas, dementia units, memory care units, infant patient wings, maternity wings, and emergency care units. Notice that all of these are very similar in that the patients for their clinical needs would require their containment. This is not used in an area to keep the public out. Then you'd have to use something like a delayed egress. For more information and continuing education opportunities, please visit Asa Abloy Academy by clicking in the link in the comments below. Please click like and subscribe to this channel. You can follow me on Twitter at our consultant and or connect with me on LinkedIn for updates. And if you have a code question or if you want something 
featured on a future episode of Code Corner, you can email me at katherine.flower at osobloy.com. Thanks for joining me in the Code Corner today. My name is Katie Flower, and my goal is to help you achieve security in the built environment.